We're getting Jason Nathanson on the phone right now. Um, mm. I don't know. That kind of did sound like it. Yeah, it really did sound like it. There's a, I, I, I'm hesitant to bring it up, but there's a famous uh, case where somebody claimed that George Harrison stole a song and it took like, 30 years to sort of litigate and they finally came back and said no he didn't but or yes he did but those two songs didn't sound like anything else jason nathanson are you there i'm here hello all right so explain this to us we just played the 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 two songs back to back and i gotta tell you they sound kind of similar okay but there's a bigger bar for what is copyright infringement than just sounding similar Mm -hmm. but what the comparison that you just did the jury never got to hear because the jury never heard the actual song taurus by spirit they just heard the sheet music because they could only use the sheet music because in 1967 you couldn't copyright a performance or recording of a song just the sheet music so the judge ruled you can't play the song uh but you could you could introduce the sheet music and have somebody play that so that was played on a keyboard at one point and then that was played on a guitar at one point but it sounds very different than the actual recorded version which everybody's hearing back to back just for fyi the jury never heard it like you just heard it wow okay so why did all this come up now after all these Mm -hmm. years There's a couple of reasons. One was the Blurred Lines trial in 2014, which kind of opened the door for a lot of copyright cases to be filed. Right. At that point, this case was filed by the estate of spirit frontman Randy California. Randy California, he died. He never filed in all the chances that he had. He never filed. And I've heard a couple different stories about this. One, I've heard that he didn't, he, he knew about the similarities, obviously, but didn't really care that much. From the attorney for the plaintiff yesterday, he said, well, Randy California knew about it, wanted to file, just never really had the money to do it. So for whatever reason, he never did it. But after he died, his estate tried to do it. So you could see that as a money grab or whatever. But they were the ones who went ahead and tried to do it. And also there was a kind of a change in copyright law uh, in the late 2000s. So that kind of allowed for cases like this to go forward. How, how big was the Spirit and how big was this song? Because uh, quite frankly, not that I'm a rock <laughs> expert, I've never heard of it. I'd never heard of it either, uh, and I've heard it a lot now, okay. over and over <laughs> and over again. If I never hear this or Stairway to Heaven again, you know, that's kind of going to be okay with me. Uh, but Spirit was, you know, kind of big. Led Zeppelin did play with them on a bill in the early in the late 60s. Before Led Zeppelin was really a thing, when they were just starting out, they played at a couple different concerts or uh, festivals with Spirit. They knew Spirit. Jimmy Page testified to this. He had four or five Spirit albums in his collection, including the album with this song on it. And there's a song by Spirit called Fresh Garbage. When Led Zeppelin was just starting out, they stole the riff fresh from Fresh Garbage. They did do that and played that on stage a couple of times. So this was a band people were aware of. Led Zeppelin was aware of them at the time, even if you weren't. So when it's all said and done, the jury comes back, there's no infringement, there's no copying, so Stairway to Heaven now lives as its own independent song, making the billions of dollars that it made over the last 40 years. Yeah, they had to prove two things. One, that Led Zeppelin, Jimmy Page, and Robert Plant specifically had access to the song, which they did prove. The jury said, yes, you you guys had played together. Jimmy Page, you had the, the album in your collection. You guys, the likelihood of you hearing the song, it probably happened. But in the technicalities of copyright, that did not happen. It's so interesting that the, the jury didn't hear the two songs played back to back. And that's what the, the, the plaintiff's attorney afterwards, he made it. I was talking to him about it and he made a big stink about that. So I asked, well, then are you going to appeal? He said, eh, I don't know. We're going to talk to the people and figure it out. So, mm. you know, it's possible that they could appeal. That's what the big, the, you know, a lot of people I've talked to, uh, another copyright lawyer who was there who watched the whole trial, they said, I mean, that's kind of an issue. The jury never heard it like we heard it. Yeah. But again, you know, they, they heard what they needed to hear and they found no infringement. Jason Nathanson on the inside. Give Giving us all the straight dope. Jason, have a good weekend. Thanks for checking in. You're welcome. 625, Big 550, KTRS.